let's now have a look at the night sky as we view it with the naked eye. What you're looking at here is the whole of the night sky looking out from the earth in all directions as it's viewed in visible light. So the way that we see it with the naked eye. You can see stars, you can see the faint glow of our galaxy, which as we know is actually made up of millions and millions of stars which your eye can't make out individually. And as we've also learnt, that light has been travelling from those stars, in some cases for a very long time. The nearest stars are a few light years away, so we see them as they would have looked a few years ago. And with your naked eye you can see stars which are even thousands of light years away. If you know exactly what you're looking for, you can actually see with your naked eye a galaxy which is two million light years away. So light really is the cosmic messenger. It's what takes what's happening in other parts of the universe at distant times and brings it to us so that we can study it. There are limitations to what we can see with visible light though. If you look closely at that image you'll see that along the centre part of the galaxy it looks like there's something that's blocking our view. There are actually gas clouds within the Milky Way and dust lanes which obscure our view of certain parts and so there are parts of the galaxy including the galactic centre which are entirely blocked from our view with visible light. So is there any way that we can reveal this hidden universe hidden from view by these dust lanes? In the 19th century people started to discover phenomena such as radio waves and x-rays. It was realised that radio waves, x-rays, um, light, along with infrared light, UV and gamma rays are all actually the same phenomenon. They're all electromagnetic radiation. The only difference between, for example, light and radio waves is the wavelength, the length of those waves. So for example, relative to red light, blue light has a very short wavelength. So even within the visible spectrum, which spans from red to blue, we have a change in wavelength of a factor of about two. But this is just one tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum with much, much shorter wavelengths than blue light. We have ultraviolet light, x-rays and gamma rays. With much longer wavelengths than red light, we have infrared, microwaves and radio waves. So if we restrict our study of the universe to just using optical light, visible light, then there's a whole hidden universe that we're missing out on. Light actually has a very, very short wavelength, very, very short indeed, which means that it's easy to block with dust or something like that. Longer wavelengths um, can actually manage to penetrate through the dust. So these other wavelengths might be a great way for us to see deeper into the universe. Modern astronomers have a whole range of tools at their disposal. Telescopes which allow us to study the sky right the way through from radio waves all the way through to gamma rays. The only ones you'll find down here on Earth are really radio telescopes and optical telescopes. At other wavelengths we have trouble with the atmosphere actually being opaque and blocking those signals. So we may build those telescopes up on the top of mountains or in the case of X-ray telescopes, for instance, we need to put them right above the atmosphere in orbit. And when we look at the sky, for example, using radio waves, we really do get a whole new view of the universe. Not only does it reveal objects that we couldn't see before, such as the galactic center, which is hidden behind dust lanes, but we can also see whole different classes of objects which simply don't emit light but do emit radio waves.